Chapter 5 The Thorax, Thoracic Wall, and Diaphragm Question 1. A medical practitioner places a stethoscope over the patient's seventh right intercostal space in the mid-axillary line. The stethoscope overlies the a. Upper lobe of the lung b. Middle lobe of the lung c. Lower lobe of the lung d. Costodiaphragmatic recess Correct answer, c. Lower lobe of the lung the oblique fissure demarcates the junction of the upper and lower lobes on both lungs and the upper and middle lobes from the lower lobe in the right lung, it follows the line of the sixth rib. The stethoscope would therefore lie over the lower lobe but is not positioned low enough to be over the costodiaphragmatic recess. Question 2. The best place to listen to the general heart sound with a stethoscope is the A. 5th left intercostal space in the midclavicular line. b. 2nd left intercostal space 1 inch from the sternum. c. 3rd left rib at its junction with the sternum. d. Sternum midway between the sternal angle and xipha sternum. Correct answer is a. 5th left intercostal space in the midclavicular line. The left fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line is also the best location to listen to the mitral valve of the heart. Question 3. Which of the following structures accompany the esophagus through the diaphragm? A. The phrenic nerves. B. The splanchnic nerves. C. The sympathetic trunks. D. The vagus nerves. Correct answer is D the vagus nerves. The splanchnic nerves and sympathetic trunks actually pass behind the diaphragm and the phrenic nerves penetrate the central tendon on each side to supply sensory innervation to the underlying peritoneum lining the abdominal cavity. Question 4. In relation to the rib, the corresponding intercostal nerve lies. A. Deep to its superior border. B. Superficial to its superior border c. Deep to its inferior border d. Superficial to its inferior border Correct answer is c. Deep to its inferior border The intercostal neurovascular bundle travels along the costal groove which runs along the inferior border of each rib. If you were confused by deep, superficial, superior, and inferior refer back to Chapter 1. Question 5 the head of the sixth rib articulates with a. The inferior articular facet of T5 and superior articular facet of T6. b. The inferior articular demi facet of T5 and superior articular facet of T6. c. The inferior articular demi facet of T5 and the superior articular demi facet of T6. d the superior and inferior demi facets of T6. Correct answer is C, the inferior articular demi facet of T5 and the superior articular demi facet of T6. The superior and inferior articular facets form the synovial joints between adjacent vertebrae and are a feature of all vertebrae. The demi facets house the head of the ribs on all the thoracic vertebrae except 1, 10, 11, and 12 which have a single facet for the head of the rib. The head of ribs 2 to 9 articulate with the corresponding vertebra and the vertebra above.